and welcome to yet another episode on the Jesus Girl Entertainment Podcast. My name is Shani Kool Robinson and I will be your host. And so for this morning, this evening, this afternoon, this night, whatever time it is, wherever you are, you all know that we are still in the rising room season. And so today we have a guest by the name of David Green. David is checking in from Miami, Florida. He is an entrepreneur. He's a uh, comic creator. He is a creative all across the board. And so today we're going to talk about some of the ups and downs of creation and business, um, give some words of encouragement, some motivation, some encouragement. And so you guys want to stay tuned. This is going to be an awesome, amazing interview. So to Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Listen Notes, Podbay, Podbean, Amazon Music, Breaker, Reason.fm, thank you so much for allowing us to stream on your platform. To all of you who send words of encouragement, donations, prayers, any form of support, thank you, thank you, thank you for the love. And so without further ado, let's get right into the interview. And so sure. if we could just start by, um, David, if you could just start by introducing yourself to the viewers and um, the listeners and kind of giving them an idea of who it is. Okay, so I'm David Green. Um, I grew up in a military family. I had the opportunity to live all over the U.S., but never had a chance to travel outside the U.S. when my dad uh, went to, like, Israel and other place, Egypt. Um, actually, I stayed back here in Baltimore. Um, I went to school. I did my, my uh, bachelor degree in... California at Westwood College and I completed my architectural degree uh, noticed that I noticed that wasn't the art for me probably about a year into it and I quickly got out of it and switched gears and I went into teaching and I taught one year at um, a university out in California then I got out of there and I came back from I moved back from California to Georgia where my father retired at and I then moved to Miami to teach in K through 12 and eventually got out of that. And which led into me opening um, into entrepreneurship and opening several startups. And I then went into completing my master's at Full Sail University. And there I got my master's of entrepreneurship and innovation. And um, the rest is kind of history so far as leading into the different um, startups that I actually got into uh, so far as icon te- wearable technologies um, crowded which is the company we'll be speaking about today limelight entertainment studios uh, which is a very fun company for me um, and just a, a couple of other little uh, startups that kind of went somewhere but are still a little kind of lingering Wow. So thank you for sharing that. So you got a lot of travel experience, actually. There's so many different locations. And we're going to talk about some of those different startups. But let's just start off by talking about Crowded. That is the business at hand. So can you tell us a little bit about Crowded and actually where you got the name, where where the name? Sure. So Crowded is actually um, a company where it focuses on minorities. um, And as the SBA defines it, Uh, um, any minority group we'll we'll leave it at that so any minority group and we focus specifically on tech startups and so uh, what makes us different is when you think about companies like Kickstarter Patreon Start Engine we decided to incorporate some of the best aspects of those platforms um, like when we talk about Patreon, Patreon has that ability to where uh, if you have a following or, you know, you can amass a following of people to help fund your product as you get up and going. That's our um, that's one of our offerings on the platform. Another offering is more like more like a Kickstarter, where if someone wants to run a campaign, um, they can run a campaign. And in essence, Uh, In essence, it is similar to like a donation because you're not getting equity in return. So even if you get a reward, nine times out of 10, people are still going to say it's they're going to feel like it's a donation. So 
those two options that I stated first are more like donation reward type of options. Um, but it's for a great social cause. Uh, and the third option will come about a year later, which will be equity on the platform. And that will allow companies who are more established or the companies that actually started off at the lower programs and came up, that will allow their followers or anybody to tap into equity in those companies. And the way that the company and the name came about was um, I spent years pitching and pitching um, to different investors. I've, uh, I've even had some investors take my idea and um, I went to pitch that same investor a different idea like a year or two later. And they, in the middle of me pitching, they said, hey, you know, we tried your last idea, but it didn't work. And so stuff like that got to me because it felt like I wasn't getting anywhere because it was always a money issue um, and it's specifically a prototype issue. And um, so I said, you know what? I want a company where I can not only help myself, but help other people who are in this similar situation. And when you look at a lot of minorities, a lot of times we don't get past that that prototype stage because we may not have that friends and family or a network that can help us get that money up and going for that prototype. And so therefore your dreams or our dreams are then sometimes killed right there or our uh, confidence is shattered sometimes. And that's, you know, it leads to us not getting uh, or us not really progressing in the tech field. And you can you can clearly see that by the numbers. Um, but crowded kind of came about. I was laying in the bed and uh, and I was talking to God. And I said, I, I, I want something different. You know, I, I want something to stand out, and I want something that has a sweet slogan. I mean, slogan. Um, you know, a slug line. You know, something like, uh, oh, just you know, just crowded. You know, something sweet like that, and. And he just he just gave it to me, you know. It was I was laying in the bed, and he just gave me that uh, that name. So, uh, and it wasn't easy. It took some days. It took it really took some uh, some praying, and it took writing down names, and uh, and it just hit me just like that. So that's where the name came from. Oh. Uh, well, I'll yeah. say I love the concept. I've actually heard of Patreon, but I've never gotten into it. So I just want to ask this. You kind of answered this question, what caused you to start it? And I'm so sorry that those people stole your ideas. That happens. That happens often. And so oftentimes if I have a creative idea, I will guard it. <laughs> because when right. you don't have the finances to really bring it to pass, it is frustrating to see somebody take something that you have been, you know, praying over or something that you're believing God for and really, and but it didn't work for them because it wasn't their vision. And so they can even try to steal, you know, whatever else, but because God gave it to you, that's why I can, they can take the vision, they can take the logo, I mean, whatever else they want to try to take, but it's just not going to work if it's not in the hands of the person who created it. And so let that be encouragement to you. So I just wanted to ask this. So for a growing business like mine, um, with Jesus Girl, how could Crowded benefit a business like mine? So it's not completely a small business, but it's not a huge establishment as of yet. So how could we work with a, a, a company like Crowded to kind of get what it is that you're trying to accomplish to come to pass and then also so that it can be beneficial? Um. That's a great question. <laughs> so I think, uh, in essence, just by just by us having uh, minority crowds together, period, that alone um, that alone kind of makes the working together beneficial. Um, particularly because one, when you talk about crowded, it's a, it is geared toward tech, but your what you're doing is considered tech as well um and and just so so everybody knows tech is actually more than just computer software it's it's pretty much anything we come up with but the way that we normally uh hear about it or know about it is we define it as oh it's you know a phone uh a computer software and technology is pretty much anything you create 
Oh. Uh, so back on track. Uh, Crowded actually focuses on the not all technology, but more so like we talked about computer um, and invention. We focus on product tech as well. And I'm still getting to, getting to know your company, but um, I think that the most beneficial way would uh, probably be first sitting down and talking things out to see how we can actually make things work for both of us. But just off the top of my head, I think by us having the same type of crowd, um, I think that's the one of the most beneficial ways um, that it can actually work for both of us. Thank you now, so much, David. That wasn't... Oh, go ahead. I'll let you finish. No, no. I was it, Something hit my, my mind after you said that. Then that, uh, you know, when we talk about Jesus Girl and it being technology, I can definitely see how Crowded can build, can help fund the platform um, and just take it to something... Uh, uh, something different if you decide to you know um, let's say you wanted to get into blockchain somehow with uh, with Jesus Girl um, or anything else in technology it's, it's their opportunities there so you know that's why I say it's kind of open ended and there's opportunity to um, to develop something further I would love to. And that wasn't one of our questions. So I do appreciate you even for answering that. And so we'll kind of touch base on that in a, a more opportune time. But this is actually going to lead us to our next question. You did mention, mention that you had um, some other businesses that you started up and you kind of talked about this earlier in the beginning. And so do you want to kind of talk about some of those, you know, letdowns? What are some of the reasons that those business didn't come to fruition? We know that some people stole some ideas, but I'm sure that there were some other things that kind of took place. If you want to kind of just elaborate on what kind of stopped those other things from taking off, you know, and making it to the place that you really wanted them to, to go to. I'll give you opportunity to share about that at this time. Okay. Uh, at, oh, all right. So. They go into, uh, you know, just some previous businesses. It goes back to 2015, 2016, when I went into my master's degree. Um, And just as a sidebar, I've actually been into entrepreneurship um, and design my whole life. Well, at least as far as an elementary kid. Uh, My mom was actually inventing... uh, different baby products and she had me draw the products and so that was kind of like an introduction into business and design and then as I got uh, older maybe about fifth or sixth grade I got into my own lawn cutting business and so those seeds were planted long time ago and um, I just never really uh, focused on those because my parents used to tell me, oh, well, take the sure money, take the sure, go into architecture and all of that stuff. And that's not what I was really designed to do. Um, so in 2016, when I went into my master's program, I finally decided to do something that I wanted to do, that I love, which was entrepreneurship. And in that program, they had us focus on one specific idea that we had to carry out through the whole Uh, master's program and in that program I focused on icon wearable sports technology because I love basketball I played basketball and other sports and so that particular technology back then in 2015-16 was wearable tech was still growing um, outside of Fitbit which really just tracked your basic metrics but icon actually focused on advanced metrics and that was something that wasn't really out back then so every time i went to go get a quote for uh the prototype i was getting stuff like a hundred thousand or one hundred and fifty thousand, and um so i kept trying to you know get that uh prototype made and 
um, I kept approaching um, different uh, investors and they like, well, you got a prototype made? And so you keep hearing that and it frustrates you because you're like, well, where am I going to get this money from to get this prototype made? So one, right. And so one of the things that we learned in the entrepreneurship program is to, we learned about if sometimes if something is too expensive, sometimes maybe you need to pivot for a moment. Um, maybe you need to go to another idea that's more accessible and then come back to that one that wasn't as accessible because of the money or whatever reason. Um, so that's what I did. I then, um, uh, I, to be honest, I don't remember what company I went to next. I do remember after that, I went to work for Uber Technology uh, in downtown Miami. And I was there for two years. And during that time, I actually started building uh, Revelation Ads, which was a in-car advertising platform. And I got the idea from working with the customers or the drivers at Uber. And they wanted a, another way to, uh, another way, another stream of revenue. And, you know, that idea hit me. And that idea has started to take off. Uh, I got some news press. Uh, again, that one, it came to the money issue. I spent about $700 with a programmer. And it, he took my money and it was, I just didn't have the, the means to fight him in court. Um, and things kind of went sideways with that. So that was one of the things that kind of set me back in that business outside of the pandemic hitting. And um, that just kind of slowed that business down. Um, so when you, so, um, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. So with the Revelation ad, that actually sounds like a very, very good um, business. So with it slowing down, you said that what you learned in entrepreneurship, um, the lessons that you learned were that if you didn't really have the finances to bring it to pass and kind of switch lanes and then come back to it. Is that something that you see yourself going back to um, once you kind of get to the place that you desire to be with the current business that you're working on? Um, I, I don't see myself going back to it. And and I say that because. I can come up with a lot of, well, God can give me a lot of good ideas um, in, in an abundant, and uh, they all can be great money makers, but I wasn't really passionate about that. It was an idea that popped up while working at Uber. Um, so it, that was one of the ones I had to say, you know, I had to really pray about and say, you know what, that wasn't something that was really on my heart. It would have been nice and it was a great idea, but I had, sometimes I have to distinguish between it's a great idea and um, is this something that I really want to pursue? You know, and I can't pursue, and I had to learn, I can't pursue every idea. Right. So if you could give someone yeah. and um, some advice, one thing I did a podcast a few, I think Sundays ago, or maybe it was on a Friday. I believe it was on. I don't know which day it was at one, but entitled creativity is the new currency. You're welcome. Um, when you mm -hmm. are creative, just like you just said, I can come up with an idea and just, you know, you know that this is a very rich idea or this is something that can bring, you know, forth a lot of revenue. You just got to be able to really discipline yourself to get in that place to be able to receive it. One thing that mm -hmm. Lawrence said when he got on here is actually one of my, I, I would say he's kind of like a business mentor, able to bounce ideas off him at any given time. But one thing that he said is that he had the vision for the um, college match pros but he just didn't have the technology part of it. And so, well, that's funny. We're talking about technology right now. But he said he didn't have that. And so what he did was he disciplined himself for nine months to learn that. And then he was able to really bring it to pass. And so if you could give some advice to someone who's just cr completely creative, I mean, just, just so much creativity, has all these different ideas, but kind of like sometimes when you have a lot of ideas, you can be like stretched thin. You can be in a lot of different... Um, places at one time and I'll just share this and then I'll give you an opportunity to answer one thing mm -hmm. that I heard Paul Perry say is that you need to focus on one thing and make that thing your thing and then that thing will lead you to be able to do the other thing so for him it was the place 
And so he focused on the plays and he lost a lot of money in that process. He even talked about being homeless, living out of his car. But eventually that play hit. You know, it, 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 it took him to a whole nother, you know, when I found out about Tyler Perry and Medea and all of that, it was from his plays. And then the movies came and now he has this entire, you know, production studio. And so if you could give some advice to someone who's just completely like they just cannot help it that they're so creative, but, you know, they can't get the collateral. They can't build the finances to fund their dream. What advice could you give them just based upon what it is that you've experienced, based upon what it is that you know now, what advice could you give that person? That's uh, that's an excellent question. So uh, I've been pondering that for a while. And, uh, and you know, we always talk about, you know, we're all individuals, we're all different. And uh, sometimes some advice may not exactly fit you but you can still take from it or you can maybe take something from it. And um, so what I would tell somebody is first, when you're a creep. And now for a brief intermission.
everybody, you know, know yourself, know what you can do, no limits. If you don't, then you need to find them out. Um, because I noticed, uh, and I say this about myself, um, I can, I, I'll work on different projects, you know, like we were just saying, you know, um, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, you should work on one project. And, and, um, and so I noticed when I was in architecture, one of the things that we got, well, one of the things that we did all the time was we worked on two or three projects in one day at the, at the whim's notice because if a project had to go out or we had to make changes. So we were constantly working on different projects, you know, even at a high efficiency. And, um, and I excelled at that. And I noticed now, even as a creative, when I try to sit down and focus on one thing, like let's say Monday through Friday, I'm not as productive. When I, let's say crowded, I work on crowded to a certain point, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then it's kind of like, well, I get stuck somewhere and then I may take, I may take a step back from it, you know, for a couple of days. And when I take a step back, Somehow this other project that I left alone for a while, all of a sudden I'm able to pick up on that and get a lot done in those two days. And then I'm able to jump back to crowded. So I thought I, and that's what I mean by knowing yourself. I don't know why I'm like that, but that's just, I just function better like that. Um, but a lot of people, I would say probably, I don't recommend that. Um, probably focus on one pro if, if at most two projects I you know I give one project all my time and I'll do a little bit on some other projects if, even if it's just writing notes just get a few notes on my phone or something like that um, but you can't tackle all projects that's that's the whole gist of it and then the other thing is I've been trying to go at it alone all this time um I think within the last year, I started to build a team. And even that's tough because if you're not talking money, then a lot of people, a lot of times, won't necessarily team up with you unless they, I, I don't know, maybe unless they clearly believe in the project or their friends or uh, some other reason. That was awesome, David. And I just wanted to read this quote because it comes from Albert Einstein. That was the first time that I've heard that perspective and I can actually identify with that as well. But what he said was, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. And we know he grew to be a genius. And so when you said you identified that architecture was not your thing and you had to get into entrepreneurship, first of all, that was, you know, that light bulb going off. Like, I don't, you know, belong in this setting. Sometimes our parents may have visions for us. Sometimes our peers may even have visions for us. And even as I just said, with, the, you know, focus on the one thing, creativity is not one size fit all, fits all. So if you are like a multitasker or if you're a multifaceted person, like even myself, I do the podcast, but I also do morning prayer. I also teach the youth. I also write songs. I also, there's just very many things, many things that I do, but I know right. that at the forefront of it, there's one main thing that I focus on, but there's a lot of branches that comes to that one thing. And so I'm just grateful that you shared that, that sometimes you may have to step back from the main thing, but you know that right now crowded is the main thing. But sometimes you may have to step back from crowded to kind of give these other areas attention, water the other seeds that are in the ground, and then come back to it. And so thank you for sharing that perspective. That was actually the first time I've heard someone openly share that per perspective. And it's very true. When you're creative, you're not like just in one, one space. You do, you know, different things. And so I'm grateful that you shared that. And so this is actually going to bring us to our next question. How has the pandemic impacted your business? Um, you know, as I mentioned, it hasn't really impacted this one yet because this one is just now getting up and going. But I had a home care agency. I started um, when I was at Uber and it grew pretty, pretty good to where Uber had, you know, Uber said, hey, you know, you're, you're running a business outside of, I mean, inside of our business. And it was time to go. So, um, you know, I was let go from there 
And, you know, uh, I was scared to jump out because I was like, well, I, I still need this money here. And, you know, if I don't, you know, if I don't make it uh, with this, uh, it was Marvelous Home Care. That's what it was called. Marvelous Home Health Care. And I was like, if I don't make it with this, then, you know, I, I, I just, I, I'm not going to make it. I don't know. And I was worried. And um, so a lot of times when I worry, I always go to the word or I'll keep uh, these little three by five cards um, and the three by five cards are pertaining to whatever's going on in my life. If I'm worrying about my son, I grab verses and I put them on those cards uh, uh, pertaining to kids or pertaining to whatever God has said about, you know, children. And those are verses I kind of quote throughout the day whenever, whenever that worry comes up. So um, I had one of those cards the night before and the morning, the next morning, I got up and I prayed and I said, Lord, it's, it's not on my heart to be here at Uber. What do you want me to do? By the end of that day, I was fired or they let me go. I said, well, I, I was fired. And I said, OK, um, I'm gone. I have no choice. That same week, I got another client. And by the end of that year, I was making one hundred and twenty four thousand when I was sitting there worried about, uh, you know, am I going to make it? I, I need this Uber job. And uh, that job was affected by the pandemic because two of my clients died from COVID and that pretty much shut the business down because they were paying over a hundred something thousand for the year. So um, I didn't decide to pursue that job anymore just because of all the stuff that's going on. And I didn't want to be liable um, because I depended on other people working for me and sometimes they may not always do the right thing. So I just wanted to kind of take that, that risk of being sued or anything like that out. And I left that business alone. Thank you for sharing that. And so um, I'm sorry for the mm -hmm. loss with the last company. I know it's a lot of, and people don't talk about this though, but it's a lot of ups and downs emotionally when you're doing these kind of, uh, when you stepping out on these business endeavors. And so I just thank God that you still have that, you know, that hope to keep creating, to keep going forward and keep moving forward. And actually what comes to mind when you were saying, like, I started to panic, like if I, if this doesn't make it, I'm not going to make it. There's an animated film. You mentioned you have a son. And so I have children. So I watch a lot of animated films, but it's entitled mm -hmm. Robinson. And this young man was a creative and he could make these inventions, but nobody saw the, you know, the uniqueness and what it was that he had. His foster mom did, but um, they failed all the time. He would do an invention and it just, he had a great idea for it, but it just would not work. And because they were not working, it actually cost him a lot of um, times or uh, opportunities to be adopted. And so just as he was getting ready to give up on doing it, this kid comes from the future who happens to be his son. And he's like, no, you need to keep doing that because what he didn't know is on the back end of all of those failures, on the back end of all of those disappointment, on the back end of him messing up so many times that it was going to be those very inventions that's what was going to get him married to a beautiful wife, uh, adopted into an amazing family and he was going to actually build a home and have all of his inventions functioning so much so that what it was that he had everybody else was going to need and so I think that in that infancy if the enemy can do one thing is to discourage us from moving forward because he knows that if we keep going one thing that God told me he said that the enemy can't stop what I'm going to do in your life but what he can do is frustrate it and frustrate you and so if you get frustrated enough, you'll throw in the towel and say, I'm done with this. I don't want to do it no more. But the, on the back end of it, if you keep going, he said, if you will reap, if you faint not. And so the fact that you kept going, the fact that you're, you're still moving, the fact that crowded is going to open up space. And you never know once you get to that place that you desire to be with this business, you may very, like you said, there are some things you're going to go back to, some things you may not revisit, but that experience, they can never take away from you. And one more thing before I go to the next question, even with my experience and working in the health field, there were some jobs and some opportunities that my friends said they couldn't get fresh out of school because a lot of people wanted people who had experience. So even though we all had the same education, even though we all graduated, some people didn't want to hire them because they didn't have experience. That's true. 
it, that that didn't be the case. That wasn't the case for me. God opened some doors for me, but there were some opportunities that were requiring experience. So if you got nothing else from everything that you went through in life, it was the experience. There's the experience they can never take away from you. Money you can get in, money can come and go. But experience, like you know for sure, if you go this route, this is what's gonna come here. If you do this, this is gonna what's gonna come from this. So it's never a loss, it's always a lesson. And so you got a lot of experience. And we just thank God for you being here and even sharing with us on today. And so this is gonna take us to our next question. Do you believe that new entrepreneurs should be Hasty to quit their jobs and work their businesses full time. This is a major question. Everybody's wondering it. Or should they continue mm -hmm. working until the business has raised enough capital to support their livelihood? Now, I, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give answers from two sides. Okay. I'm gonna give the worldly answer. And I'm gonna give <laughs> the Christian answer. Okay. The, the the worldly answer is you should stay at the business. As long as your entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial business is not making enough money, when it starts to make enough money, um, I've seen cases where I'll take mine for instance. It was making decent money, and I was still able to work Uber at the Uber office. But when it, it, it came to a head to where they were calling me too much and I had to run to the bathroom too much and they're like, what are you doing? Then it was time to go. And I just, I didn't want to let go. At that time, it's time to go because that tells you that you are getting business, you know? Um, so you need to figure out how to make this business grow now. And um, and even then, I utilized, I utilized Fiverr a lot. Uh, people writing stuff for me, uh, helping me grow the business, um, things like that. Um, now the other, now the Christian point of view is I always tell people to pray about it because that's the most important thing is his timing. Um, you can jump the gun and he could have something for you and you can jump the gun and say, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. And it may not be the right timing. And so you may experience turbulence, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be a failure. And you may just have to experience a little more turbulence in the beginning compared to its timing. You know, uh, I go back to the example I gave you about when I prayed that very morning. I said, what am I doing? What do you want me to do? Do I leave? I was gone. They fired me by the end of that day. And uh, so it's it's. Praying about it first for me is praying about it first and allowing him to work that timing. Um, but other than that, the safe answer is let your build your business first. Um, if you notice you're starting to getting if you start to get a lot of calls, you start to get a lot of traction and stuff like that, then it all depends on your situation. I jumped out there. I, I Like I said, I mentioned I have a son. I jumped out there when a lot of people were like, oh, well, now you're not making it. I drove Uber after that. I left Uber and I went to drive Uber as an everyday job. And I was focused on as long as I could pay my rent and bring money, I mean, bring food in. That's that's the basis of it. Um, and that was my goal. As long as I can cover those two things, those basic needs, until I get to a better point. So I say, you know, someone, you need to set your goals, know where you're going. And it all depends on your specific situation. Thank you so much, David. That was powerful. And actually, as you were speaking, what came to mind was that movie, The Pursuit of Happiness. I don't know if you watched it. <laughs> yeah. When I tell you that's so like, no, that's real. Like he had this business. He was trying to sell these um, objects and, you know, he was so invested in it. He lost everything. But at the end, just to see that all of that struggle and everything he went through, you know, he was able to come through. And so you just, this is the next question that we have. Did you have anyone in your family, church, or community that inspired you to become the man you are today? Like, oftentimes there's just that one, you know, person that kind of gives you that hope to keep going. Um, I don't know if it was that close um, to home for you. It may have been somebody afar, but did you have anybody that kind of gave you that inspiration to become the man that you have grown to be? Sure. 
Um, and to be honest, it, it wasn't really one person. It was multiple people because I constantly traveled. And uh, when I was younger, my father got custody of me. But by him having to go to the fields for 30 days and go overseas and stuff, he, he had to leave me with friends or other family members. So uh, just to give an example, during the time when I lived in Seattle, um, you know, I had a had a, a person or two that influenced me there. When I moved to Baltimore, it was more like uh, uh, my teacher influenced me uh, and my coach. Uh, with chess and basketball um, and then when I moved to high school I was finally with my dad and then during those years he influenced me and those all play a equal part in who I am today as well as some other people along the way because the very person who I am it, it really wasn't one person um, you know uh, that really kind of influenced me like that it was like all like uh, equal influences that are big parts of who I am. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. It was multiple people that played a part in that influence, that influential role. That That's also my, my story as well. And so this is actually our second to last question. Are you proud of how far you have come and what is your long-term goal? Uh, yes, I, yes, I most definitely am proud. And, uh, you know, my long-term goal is to, I'm, I'm, I'm building for God's kingdom. That's my ultimate goal. But when I talk to business people or just people, period, my ultimate, I'll tell them my long-term goal is to build a, uh, to build a business that I am happy with every day and that it's not a job and that will impact and influence people in a positive way. Amen. Thank you so much for that. And so we're going to get ready to close. I'm going to bring the guests up if they have any questions. Are you good to answer a few questions? Sure. Yeah. Okay. We're going to bring the guests up. They're going to ask a few questions. But in closing, how can we contact you if people are interested in partnering with your business? They want to find out more about D David Green, the David Green brand <laughs> and the branches, um, <laughs> Crowded and all the other things that come with that. How can they connect with you? How can they partner with what it is that you're doing? Okay, so uh, you can connect with me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, all the social media platforms at Crowded. And the name is Q-R-O-W-D-I-T. Um, and it's, it was unique enough to go ahead and get that without putting uh, asterisks or anything else. Uh, so um, other than that, you can also find me at um, another business I didn't talk about, which is Limelight Entertainment Studios. Um, and you can find me at Limelight Comics, and that's the business that actually uh, does well, and people probably want to see more of um, a lot of books, a lot of educational books, even some Christian books, uh, Christian comics. Um, but other than that, um, that, pretty much those two platforms you can find me on. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube. Awesome. And we're going to link all of this information in the description. So if you all are interested in making a connection and finding out more um, about uh, David Green um, and all of the business endeavors and um, different things that he has to offer, you'll be able to connect that way. We thank you, uh, David, for joining us for this interview. Um, those of you who are tuning in, we are streaming on Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Listen Notes, Podbay, Podbean, Reason.fm, and Amazon Music, and as well as some other ones that I wasn't aware <laughs> of that we're streaming on, but we are streaming, streaming, and so if you all want to catch this interview, you can definitely do so. Miss um, Nita did share that she's not in a position to speak the edits and bring everything together but before we close out i'm going to pray and so dear most gracious father how we thank you and praise you for this interview father i thank you for david green god i thank you for the creativity that you have given him which is an indicator that he is your son for father we know that in the beginning 
you created the heaven and the earth. And so, Father, we pray that even as you have created things and you have given him the ability to create, that in this season, his creation will begin to bring forth fruit and that fruit may abound, that he may be able to live off of and profit from what it is that you have deposited on the inside of him. Father, we speak financial increase. Father, we speak uh, even emotional uh, health and we just speak uh, just well-roundedness, Father, all the way around, all the way across the board, oh God, that he be healed, that he be able to do what it is that you've called and commanded him to do and be who it is that you have called and commanded him to be and that he can be a testament for your glory that people may look at his life and his success story and be able to draw even from some of those hard places father we just thank you and praise you for this interview and we just believe you to do what only you can do in his life as we go into 2022 god we're believing you for praise reports we're believing you for abundance and we're believing you for success to the mighty and matchless name of jesus i do still this prayer and thank you for being god and god all by yourself hallelujah and amen amen and so that's going to seal our um, prayer. Um, <laughs> I said, you know, I'm, yeah. So yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah, okay. and, and what I, to be honest, what I really love about your show, and what I, and the reason why I was speaking so much, is because I didn't have to hold back. Uh, when I do all these other interviews, like I, I do a lot of interviews with my limelight comics, talking about my comics, and they ask me my my whole experience when I do, uh, when I'm creating, I can't share God with them. And so I have to come up with other answers and, you know, kind of, it's almost like falsified answers a bit. Or I had to cut God out and make it seem like it's me. So, you know, uh, that's what I really loved about this show. I didn't have to filter uh, the creator. Yeah. And I'm so grateful. You know, I'm grateful for that, too, because that was the hardest part for me, too. We're getting ready to start it because um, I, I have family that have different beliefs and things like that. But when he gave me the platform, he gave me the vision, the idea for it and everything. Um, it just gave me freedom to be who I am. Because when you're even at work, working in the health field, they don't have no gospel music. You know, people just want right. to work. So to have mm -hmm. the freedom to be able to speak about God and just speak about, you know, your religious beliefs and just just be okay it just it's powerful and i'm really praying that as this goes out that the right people get the information and that there are some connections that are made that can take your business to the next level um i just believe god for the
Tell me I am something. Always say I'm not that. I know that God is big. 